Hello everybody. Today we're going to be doing our Wallex date night or paint night kit. Um, so I'm going to one, run you through some of the supplies, starting with these two canvases that will be included. For the purpose of this video, I've actually selected two canvases that are slightly larger than what you'll be getting in the kit. In the kit, you'll be getting eight by 10 canvases. Um, and these ones I believe are 11 by 14. And this is just so that you can see some of the details that will be in the video, just a little bit more clear, but it will be super easy for you to follow along with your eight by 10 canvases that are gonna be featured in the kit. You will also be getting this 10 well palette with a plastic cover on it. So you'll get two of these in your kit. You will get two sets of these Princeton Real Value five set of brushes. And then lastly, and most excitingly, we will be giving you a, a set of six Wallex Fluid Acrylic set. Um, and that's the secondary set. So it has a lot of nice jewel tones in there. I will show you exactly how to use that. In today's video, we're going to be doing a combined sunset painting. So some other things that you may find useful are this uh, recycled can, and this is just to trace a circle. Um, you can also just freehand the circle if you feel confident doing that, but I just grabbed this out of my recycling uh, bin and peeled off the label, and uh, I'm going to use that to trace a circle in the middle of the canvas in just a second. I'll show you that. And then I'm also going to be using a ruler. Um, just to get a super straight line. Again, you can freehand this part if you want. All right, so to trace the circle, I'm just gonna be using um, the Palomino Blackwing pencil, but you can really just use any pencil or pen that you have available to you. So what you'll do is you'll just take your um, can and place it right in the center of both of the canvases. And then you're just going to do a line all around the can like that and then after that you're going to take your ruler and then just go about half to three quarters of the way down through the circle and right across the canvas you're going to draw a straight line okay and you and your partner can take your turns doing this part. One person can do it, whatever works for you. So um, at this point, we're going to just do a, like a mountain line that's gonna trace the mountain shape across both canvases. So I'm gonna do that. And you can kind of get creative with this part if you want to, um, you know, just get to some crazy mountains, feel free to do that. If you want just more rolling hills, you can also do that. You know, this is a painting that you're gonna have in your own home. So feel free to express the way that you want to, but this is just kind of a general guideline. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I think what the key is, is that you wanna leave the sun in the center exposed. So that's some mountains on one side and then I'm going to do kind of the same idea on the other side and then you can kind of start to see what we're going to be painting here today. So I had the idea of doing a sun in the middle, some sort of a water scene and then we're going to do the mountains on either side um, and then the purpose of this is to actually have your partner paint one side and then you paint the other side and then you can choose to display them in different rooms or choose to have them together on one wall. So that is the beginning. So now what we're gonna do is take our um, wall set of paints here and our palette here and just lay out the paints into the different circles that we have along the palette. Okay, so here we go. So here is our palette. And then I'm just gonna tell you about each of the colors that we're gonna have in the kit here. So this is the Wallach's Cadmium Orange Hue. 
It's a nice bright orange. And actually something I should tell you also is the Wallach's fluid acrylics are a professional level um, fluid acrylic. So that means they have a lot of great pigment in them and they flow really nice. So that's why I decided to use these over our heavy body student paints for this demo. Um, it's because we'll find them a little bit easier to blend um, in certain spots. So I'll just go ahead and start laying this cadmium orange on our palette. The next color we're gonna be using is the magenta. I'm gonna leave a space in between each so that I have room to mix the two colors together in between. The next that we'll be using is the Wallach's uh, Cobalt Blue. This is like kind of a purpley, light blue tone, um, almost like periwinkle, it's really beautiful. Next, I'll be using the Cobalt Teal. This is one of my favorite colors that we have actually. It's such a bright and beautiful color. We will also be using the Thalo Green. And then lastly, we'll be using the Dioxazine Purple, which is a nice dark purple, but when you paint it onto a white surface like this, you can start to really see the tone in it. And uh, we'll be using this in some of like the darker areas of the painting today. So now we have like a few spots to mix in between. We have more than enough room to mix here. Um, and then another thing I should say is I laid out quite a bit of paint, but if you found that you didn't have quite uh, enough for the purpose of your painting, um, feel free to add some as you go. You can also wash out your palette if you find it gets a little bit gunked up um, and start fresh. That's what's great about these little acrylic palettes. They wash out really, really well um, and you can just wipe them right out and start with a new fresh palette. Palette. So this is what the palette is that we're going to be using today and next I'm going to just show you where to start laying out the colors. Before we begin I also wanted to mention that it might be useful to keep a roll of paper towels with you and then you'll also want to grab some water um, just to help with the mixing process. So I'm actually going to use that same can that I used to trace the circle in the middle and just fill this up with some water and then that will just help blend some paint and spread it out a little bit thinner. So I'm just going to go do that quickly. Okay, so for the first step, what we're gonna do is take our largest flat brush that we have in our painting brush kit, um, and then we're going to mix between the magenta color and the cobalt blue to create the sky. So the magenta is gonna be closest to the exterior of the circle, and then as we go upward, it's going to transition into the cobalt blue. So let me just show you how to do that. Notice as I go here, I'm going over the trace lines and that's totally fine. We're gonna layer on top of all of that with different colors. So don't feel nervous to go like too neat while you're doing this. Um, this painting is gonna end up being a lot more expressive and kind of more fun. So yeah, don't be worried about being fun as you go. So now that I've laid down a little bit of the pink tone, the magenta tone, I'm going to just dip my brush into the cobalt blue and then just start applying that in between the, um, as a transition. And then just go all the way across. Make sure you're getting into all those little valleys of where the sky will be and just keep blending and blending and blending. And you can start dragging your brush down a little bit as well and it'll help to smooth out those pink parts. See how that happens there? And then if you're moving back upwards, just remember to kind of rinse your brush in between and fill in all of those little spots.
and then I'm gonna do the same on the other canvas. So just remember, you'll have one person doing one side and another person doing the other side. So um, yours may look a little bit different, but that's the idea is like you're creating two halves of a whole picture. Of course, they're gonna look a little bit different, but I think that's what's nice about it. Um, they're gonna just be unique. And then when you put them together, even better. So we'll just keep kind of blending this down. And as you can see, the paint is thin. So we're gonna add a few layers um, as we go, but acrylic, you'll just need to draw and let it dry a bit in between. So just gonna rinse out my brush here and continue to blend it. And it's kind of cool because as you blend, you can actually get some really neat texture. Um, and to me, it kind of looks like clouds as you go up. So I find even if you end up bringing some of that pink tone upward, it's not a bad thing. Like it ends up making it more textured. Do you see what I mean there? Like those kind of end up looking almost like a cloud. And I'm just using my brush flat right against the canvas like this. Um, you can alter it and have it like a skinnier line, but I find it will cover quicker um, if you have it at a flat angle. Okay, we're gonna let this dry. Um, and like I said, we'll have to work in layers with this paint. Um, it will work best and it'll become a, the most vibrant um, if you work in layers. So we're just gonna wash off this brush, kind of squeeze out any excess. And just make sure all of that color is out of there before you transition to another color because otherwise, obviously the color will just bleed into the next. So. Okay, so for the next part, we're going to do the water half of the painting. So that is going to kind of go from here down to the bottom corner. So let me just show you how to do that. For the water, we're going to be using the cobalt blue, and then it's going to transition into the um, cobalt teal color, which is here. Um, and you'll kind of do the same technique as what we did for the sky. The cobalt blue is going to start closest to the center circle. And then as we graduate down toward the bottom, that's where we'll move into the cobalt teal color, which is the more greeny tone. So we'll start with the, um, the blue. And with that, again, we're gonna just start at the center, kind of just do a rough circle around and then just start blending outward, kind of like this. What's nice about the fluid acrylic is that it will stay wet for quite a long time. So you can really get in there and start to blend as well. So I'm just going to continue and do that same color on the other side and just a reminder this will be your partner's side or your side it doesn't matter and just kind of go roughly around that circle and it's nice because some of these paints are a little bit more transparent so um you can still see the border of the circle there which is great because we're going to go back over that after with another color So just keep laying down that blue color until it's about at the halfway point, like that. Okay. And I really like kind of like playing with those lines and it, it to me, um, helps it to look like water or like wave, a wave texture. And then just dip your brush in the water and then dip it into the teal color to start with that transition between the two. So you'll do like this and see it kind of just 
um, helps to blend between the two and you can start dragging some of it up, some of it down a little bit more. And then just continue to dip your brush into the teal to bring it down more. like that. And then I'll just do the same on the other side here, starting at the halfway point and just kind of dragging some of the color up and some of it down, and then just continuing to add more of that teal color as you go down the painting. And again, you can bring some of that teal up as well on either side of the canvas. You can see, you can kind of like scoop that cobalt and bring it down. So you get this like beautiful texture. I see here that I didn't fill in all the way to the bottom of the line um, with the cobalt blue. So what I'm going to do is just rinse my brush and then just re-dip it. And then just make sure it's all the way covered, all the way up to the top there. And like acrylic's very forgiving. So if you find that you see mistakes afterward, it's totally fine. You can just go back and cover it back up with more paint. So that's the nice thing with acrylic. You can just fix as it's dry um, and continue to layer. So I think we've made like pretty good progress here. We've almost covered almost the entire canvases. So it's looking really, really great. Um, but we are now gonna get into like more, I guess of like the details of it. Um, and then while we let these other layers kind of dry, I'm just gonna do a little touch test. Yeah, so these top ones are actually getting there. It's a little bit wet still. So what we'll do is we're gonna just finish everything with our first layers um, and then go back in and do like a more detailed second layer. But I personally really like these areas where some of the white of the canvas is coming through. It just adds to that texture um, that we're going for, for this painting. So yeah, we'll get started on the next step. And the next step will be the sun. So we're going to just fill in this um, center circle part with the orange color that we have. So let's get started on that. So for the sun part, the center circle, we're going to be using the number eight round brush that's part of your brush set. Um, and that's because the circle is just a little bit smaller. So I like to have something that has a little bit more of a fine point to it. Um, and so you can just be a little bit more detailed with it. Um, before you do that, you do want to make sure that the paint that's within the circle is, is that you may have gotten like within the circle's borders are dry because otherwise it'll mix into the orange paint and kind of make it like gucky. So this might be a good opportunity for you to take a break, grab a glass of water or a drink, um, grab a little snack just while this first layer dries, um, take a bathroom break and then come on back once it's dry and just apply that first layer of orange. Okay, I think we're good here. Um, so what I'm going to do is again, just take my number eight round brush and just dip it into the uh, cadmium orange color without any water. And this is just to make it as thick as possible because you wanna be able to cover um, as much of the other paint that got within the circle there. So let's just go ahead and start our first layer. It'll probably take a couple layers. So this is where you kind of have to start to be patient with um, your painting and just enjoy the process. It'll take a little bit then more than just one layer. So just try and be as steady as you can with your hand and you're going to just trace along this circle. On the top 
here. I love how that orange looks, it's so nice. One technique that I have to keep my hands steady is you kind of just use your pinky to balance on the canvas. Um, and that will really help if your paint is just a little bit wet too, you won't be rubbing too much off. But yeah, just do your best to trace along the circle on the top there. And then you can do the same on the bottom. And just on the other side, like so along the bottom half of the line, that's technically where the reflection in the water will be. So I would say like you don't need to be as perfect with it on the bottom. So I'm going to just do my best here. Get the first layer of orange down like that. And you can just kind of fill in along the sides, in between the middle. And I would say it's pretty important to stay within the circle because um, again, when you're lining up with your partner's canvas, you want the circle to be the same width. So just be careful with that. The top and bottom just need to hit at the same point. So just make sure you're trying hard with at least that part. And then kind of anywhere else, if it goes outside of the circle, it's it's fine. But just the top and the bottom have to really hit within that circle space. So that's our first layer done. Like I said, it'll take a couple layers just to fill in um, over top of the other colors. Um, yeah, so let's just move on to the next part while that dries. So I'm just gonna submerge my, submerge my brush. Um, that's something important actually to note while you're working with acrylic paint, because it's permanent, you'll need to submerge your brushes in water in between uses. Otherwise the acrylic paint will dry right on the brush and you'll ruin your brush. So um, just be mindful of that, either clean it fully or um, submerge in water as you're working. I like to just keep it mine in water so that I can kind of keep going and using them. So now we're on into the next part, um, which is we're gonna be using the dioxazine purple to fill in the mountain side that we have on either side of the canvas. So um, again, um, this is kind of just the part where you can be as creative as you want with your brush strokes. Um, so let's just go ahead and get started. What I am gonna do is just change the direction of my brush strokes. So there's like a little bit of a contrast between the horizontal ones in the sky and in the water. And then we'll make these ones more vertical. Um, you can just do whatever you want though, but that's just a suggestion. It might help to make your painting a little bit more dynamic. So I'm just gonna use my half inch wash brush um, this one is just a little bit more narrow than the first um, flat brush that we use. So I'm just going to go ahead and dip that right into the paint. And so it's covered pretty well. And then you'll have to just kind of be careful again and just follow along with the guidelines that you had drawn out first. And look at how beautiful that purple color is. It's lovely and just continue to brush downward. You want to trace along the top. This is a little bit tricky, I find. And mountains will have quite a bit of texture. So if you kind of just play around with the direction of them, that's fine. It's gonna look great. 
And I find maybe the, the trickiest part will just to kind of be to try and keep that line across the horizon um, as straight as possible. Okay, I lied before. I said I was gonna do more um, vertical lines, but I kind of like this texture that you get by just switching the direction of your brush as you go. Um, you can kind of see me doing that, just rotating how I'm holding the brush. And I find it looks kind of like a mountainscape when you do that. And also this might be a little tricky for some, but if you wanted to add another kind of layer of the mountain in there, it, this is a technique to do it. So you just like grab your brush and then trace again another mountain like shape. And then because the paint is almost um, translucent, you can like see the border of it come out. So it's kind of interesting. But again, just like kind of play around with it, see what you like. Just grab a little more paint and just like continue to fill in. I like this to be quite dark because um, it'll just help with like that contrast in between the two. And then remember where I was saying in the sky where you want to fill in all the way down into the valleys, but see here I missed some, but that's okay. All you do is you just fill in and bring your mountain up a little bit further like that. And yeah, it's turning out really cool. So I'll do the same on the other side. Just start by tracing out the mountain shape here. And just filling in so that there's no white left and kind of playing around with the texture as you go. And then the trickiest part is kind of when you get close to the sun there, you want to just kind of like point your brush a little bit closer um, and it'll just make it more of a fine tip. And then you can just use that to kind of drag across the bottom. You might need to pick up some more paint like me. Um, just drag across the bottom in as straight of a line as possible. And yeah. I really like that texture of kind of going back and forth and changing the direction of my brush as I go. And as we do this, the other layers are going to be drying. So that's after we can go in and just add a few more layers of paint where we'd like to. Um, yeah. So I'm just gonna finish filling that in like that. And then I liked that idea of adding another kind of second layer of the mountain. So I'm gonna mimic that on this side. And to do that again, just grab a lot of paint on your brush and just trace a different kind of wibbly line along and just fill it in. And it just, you know, you can kind of see it there. It's not super intense, which I like, but it just gives like another kind of layer. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I'm just going to check the status. I think the paint in the sky is completely dry. So I think this is an opportunity to go back in and just add a little bit more detail um, with some more like opaque paint. So I'm going to do that. And just reminding you, we did that with our wide brush at first, but I'm going to actually switch this time and use the um, 
the same brush that we used for the mountainscape. So I'm just gonna make sure that's really, really well rinsed off in the water. Because these are white um, Taclon brushes, you can see when they're really well rinsed because you'll barely have any hint of color left in the bristles. But I will say, um, the bristles will stain. So <laughs> like this one, you can see there's still some purple in there, but that's just because the bristle has stained. So just make sure you're washing out really well. There just may be some stain residue left in the bristle. So um, reminder for the sky, we transitioned between a magenta color and then went up into the cobalt blue. And by mixing the two, it kind of made this like lighter purple tone. Um, but I really want to bring up more intensity in that magenta and that cobalt blue. And so I'm just going to show you how to do that. So using this half inch wash brush, I'm just going to submerge my brush into the magenta paint like that. And then just continue to do like these more gestural strokes across like that. And you can do the same on the other side. This part is like kind of optional. So if you decide you don't want to do that, that's totally fine. It's your painting. So just do what makes you happy. I love this like added texture. So I'm just gonna do it up. And then just rinsing that out. And then I'm gonna dip it into that cobalt blue color and do the same kind of working from the top all the way down. And you can like kind of mix them in like that. And you can like pick up some of the colors as you go as well. Kind of ends up looking like an abstract sky, which I like. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is just continue to work on the water. First thing we'll do is um, we're going to bring down the sunset reflection further down into the water. Um, and so to do that, um, we are going to, again, use this flat brush that we use for the details in the sky and the um, mountainscape. So it's the half inch wash brush. Um, so for that, uh, I'm just going to dip my brush into the orange paint, but instead of applying it like this, I'm going to switch the angle of my brush. See how it gets quite thin as you go on the side and you're just going to you do a motion like this where it's a little bit thinner. So let me show you how that's done. So you can just dip your brush into the cadmium orange. And then starting at the bottom, I'm just going to start doing these like thin lines all the way across. As you get closer to the sun, you'll want to just make sure that they come a little bit more dense. So you can actually just switch your brush to that flat side instead and just kind of brush side to side. And you can bring it right up to the surface of the water, which is like that halfway point there. Like 
that. We're gonna let that dry, because as you layer on top of the, the teal and the blue, it gets quite dark, so we'll have to add a few more layers, similar to how we'll add more layers into the sun. While that's drying, I'm going to just add a little bit more detail into the water, which will continue over top of the second half of the sun. So let me just show you. So dip your brush into the half inch wash brush into cobalt blue. And you can just do, because the second half of the sun is a reflection as we were saying. So you can just add And I'm just gonna kind of play and see where I should play some more blue here. And bring the blue down a little bit over top of the green a bit more. Do the same with the teal just adding some more lines on top the next thing we're going to do is just to bring the reflection of the mountains down so what you'll want to do is see the center line and see how much the purple comes up above the center line, you'll kind of want to mimic that distance down toward the bottom. So for me, it's going to be about here. And on this side, about here. This doesn't have to be perfect. If it ends up going all the way to the bottom corner, that's fine. But I think in order for it to be more realistic, you'll want it to just come about the same height above as it is below. So for that, we're going to, again, add more reflective lines that will get more concentrated as it moves toward the mountain. So for the purple, what I'm gonna do is just grab some of the dioxazine purple and use the center of your palette there and mix some of the cobalt blue right in with it, just to lighten it a little bit and you get this like beautiful purpley tone, like that. And then you're gonna just start in the corner and just do kind of like straight lines across, like that. Kind of like breaking them up every so often so it changes the, the width of them and then just stop right around that point where it's about the same distance down like that and i'm going to do the same to the other side and it just adds like a little bit more depth to the canvas and I find it also like kind of gives the impression of waves as well when you're a bit more gestural with it. You can just bring it right down like that. Fill in like any spots where you feel might need another little bit of a line. Yeah, kind of like that. And I notice this is still drying. So I'm gonna show you where we're gonna use our last colors here, our last color, sorry, which is gonna be the fallow green color. And we've already had that in our um, palette. So I'm going to 
take our number eight round brush and we're gonna use some of that fallow green right on top of the purple, just right toward the bottom um, where we want it to be the darkest. And adding that on top will make it like nice and punchy and dark. So I'm gonna just take my brush, submerge it right into the fallow green. And then just trace a mountain kind of scape line all along the bottom. And you can bring it up a little bit, just adding a little bit more depth and just kind of start and do a little wibbly line all across the bottom there, like that. And then as you get toward the center, just start to be a little bit more careful I'm just going to wash out that brush and then I'm going to switch to our half inch wash brush again and then I'm going to mix some of the cobalt teal with the phthalo green just in one of the other little pots here so I'm just going to take a good scoop of this plop it in there like that. Feel free to also just add more from your bottles. I'm going to take a good scoop of that and then mix it together just to get a little bit of a lighter green. Like kind of like that, kind of like a halfway point between the two. Okay. And then I'm going to use that green toward the bottom of the canvas just to again give it a little bit more detail. Yeah. Do the same, just a few strokes on the other side. You can like vary the width of them again if you want, just to change it up a bit. There. Okay. Okay, one of our last steps is to add another layer of orange over the sun, just the top half of the sun there. So I'm just gonna make sure my number eight round is really um, washed out. And again, I'm going to fully submerge it into the orange and then just go ahead and apply another thick layer on top of the existing layer that's there. And then you can take that same brush, dip it again, and then just go over some of the areas that you painted before with orange, just to brighten them up a bit. The last step you can do is just add a little bit of paint just to the center line here. All right, and I think we're done with that. Um, again, I'd just like to say, feel free to kind of add your own details as you feel fit. This is your painting. So um, it's really cool because you can have them displayed in two different rooms if you wanted. So that's what the painting looks like on its own, which I kind of think is kind of neat. Um, but personally, I think they look best when displayed together. Um, and yeah, so like a nice little memory that you and your partner or your friend can do together, even if they end up looking completely different, it'll still be a really unique piece that you can have in your home um, and have for a long time. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. Um, one other thing I would like to mention as well is um, Wallex Fluid Acrylics come in a ton of other color options too. So if um, you found that you wanted to add other colors or maybe start on another whole painting career of your own and start collecting some of these beautiful paints, 
um, then you can stop by Wallach's and check out the entire collection or just go on and view um, Wallach's Fluid Acrylics at wallach's.com and you can see the entire collection there as well. They come in a value size as well. So if you're into like fluid acrylic pouring and you go through a ton of paint, then um, it might be better for you to opt into the value size. Um, these ones here are only 120 mils, um, but the value size is quite a bit larger. So you get a little bit more paint for um, less money per milliliter. So that might be something that interests you. Um, yeah, so go and take a look at that. And thanks for tuning in.